What's up, YouTube? Unlucky Bros Incorporated here, and got a deck profile for you guys. The Cardinal Dust Orphis Post uh, Brush with the Legends set. I know this is a little late. I know this is like very late, technically, because the set's been out for a minute, but I uh, wanted to test the deck. Didn't really feel like doing a deck profile. I ended up just playing a bunch of games. Check out, you know, some games on the channel. Uh, but Cardinal Dust Orphis, which is known as the best deck. <laughs> the best deck. It's my favorite deck, personally. Um, so, let's go ahead and get to it. First, we'll start off with the, the ride line. The ride line hasn't changed. The same ride line. I still never like... Like, this two still bothers me because it doesn't really do anything. Like, I guess giving power to a unit on your field after you play order is nice. You know, try to... Do some early damage, but other than that, it doesn't do anything. But zero, if you go second draw, search for your a world card when placed on V. Uh, orders if an order is placed, um, give something five, and then the main unit, the counter blast two, call shadow army plus five if you're in abyssal dark night or the other night. So same things. On to the deck. Uh, Three of the Carnodes. Can I zoom in? I was focusing. Carnodes Orphis. Uh, Persona Riding is nice. Uh, I like Persona Riding. I think I like that. I don't know why I like that mechanic so much. Giving plus ten to the front row and drawing a card is always. It's just it's just kind of fun. And then, uh, you know, Persona Riding. That's literally why you play the three. Uh, four. Uh, why is it like that? Four of um. This grade three order in, into the dark as nobody knows. Play with a soul blast. You can retire um, the card on your opponent's field. And um, what else does it do? If if you have two or more of the of, of a world order of this these kind of or world orders in your um in your order zone, you become Dark Knight or Abyss Dark Knight. So and you want to be an Abyss Dark Knight for your things. So for that. Uh, onto the twos, I play four, uh, Cardinal, Draco, Alvred, um, during your turn, if you're in Dark Knight, he gets plus two, but if you're in Bistle Dark Knight, he gets plus five, and then at the end of the battle, he attacks, retire, Shadow Army token, choose one of your opponents with regard to retire, that's nice, you can, more retiring, and then, it's a 15 on board, 15 or 12 on board, if you are in one of the knights, which you usually should be. Um, that's what I wish that, like, the ride line had, I wish they had, like, a, the, the grade two ride line had another, like, lets you search for another order. I feel like this deck would be even more crazy. Uh, I played two, Cardinal Fang, Mazarma. Uh, when this is placed on R, look at the top three cards of your deck, choose up to one world card from among the Revilla, and put it into your hand, and put the rest of it. I ended up having four of this, but then I dropped it to two. If you play more orders than play this, I think it's better, because then you could just get the orders, and if you get the orders early, you could always ditch them. If you, like, if you have the, as long as you have the two for the requirement to be in Abyssal Dark Knight, you can just start dropping orders to ride, or stuff like that. But this is good, just in case you, like, don't see your orders like that. I dropped it from four, uh, to two, because I think I was seeing it too much, and sometimes you really don't even need it. So I think two is a good number, just to filter through your deck a little bit. You don't need to filter too too much. Uh, next, I play this order, uh, Howling Moon Knight. It's the best order in my opinion. So with a Soul Blast of one, you get to draw a card, and it does the same thing. If you have uh, multiple copies of the this worldly order, you're in the best Dark Knight and stuff like that. I love this order. The drawing is just nice. The plusing is just amazing. Uh, one, Eclipse the Moonlight with a Counter Blast. You can play it and then you get a Shadow Army token. You can get a Shadow Army early. That's really nice. You can search it. Um, just get it out of your deck early if you really want to get a Shadow token on your field fast. So, only one. I had it at two, but then I ended up just bumming it down to one because you don't want to waste too many Counter Blasts. This deck is kind of... I'm not going to say it's Counter Blast heavy, but the Vanguard does need a Counter Blast 2 to call the Shadow Token, so you don't want to use too many Counter Blasts. But you do have Counter Charger, so... I don't know. But I only played one of this. Uh, On to the Grade 1s. I play 4 of Cardinal Noid Thumborino. Um, when this unit boosts a Shadow Armor Token, you may have this unit gets plus 15 to this turn. And if you do, at the end of that battle, retire this... Retire this, all the rare guards you have in this column. So retire this in the Shadow Army. I mean, pretty much. And then you get to draw a card. Um, so that's good. It's another drawer. Um, you can get this off early, too. 
with that last order I showed you, get the shadow on me, or call it, do pretty much neither hit unless they have something to guard you, but that's a lot to try to guard early game and then you get a draw out of it. So, you are you like you're not, I don't know, so it's just it's really good. Um, for uh, detonation mutant bow bow mine, it's a counter charger. Uh, out there, boost you can put it in the soul and then counter charge, so it gives you soul and counter. Charge. That's really nice. Um, so I like it. It's uh, it's really good. Uh, then I play four violet dragons, the perfect guard that comes out in the set, the the second set. You you want to get these because um, if your hand is low, you only have like two cards off of your hand. You could just drop this and you don't got to discard. So it's the better, the superior. Perfect guard for right now. We'll probably get some better perfect guards later. I'm not sure. On to the triggers. The over trigger, Star Dragon DD, uh, Elder Breath. Really great order. The draw in 100 million is great, but the, the what really makes it amazing is the doubling the power and critical of everything in the front row. When you dry check it, that's just disgusting. You're turning 100 million to 200 million and turn everything else into like that so like getting a crit and then getting this because that happened to me a couple times if you can hit a crit and then hit this is just disgusting and it's probably going to get even better later on since we got confirmation of um the next branded gate which is the alien tentacle girls or whatever that man that's that's gonna be lit okay i hope i can get my hands on that um so i play seven crit i know a lot of people was playing eight i play seven I don't know why. It's just it feels like a good number to me, personally. Because sometimes you want to have guard, so seven crit just seems fine. But I understand why people play eight because you want to try to push for game fast, kind of. So, but I don't, instead of playing the eight crit, I play uh, seven crit and then four fronts because guarding for twenty is nice. And fronts help this deck too because it's like even though these mon even though the shadow tokens and like the main vanguard usually swings for like some good numbers. Getting a front won't all will like not really hurt you because it's like you're boosting the power, so they have to guard with even more. Because usually I swing with Vanguard first and then swing with my rear guards, usually, unless there's something going on. Uh, but this just seems I like four of these just because it's give you good protection. But I don't know, sometimes you could change it out. You could always take one out and put that extra crit in if you really want to. Uh, but that's just me, it just feels comfortable. Plus, I like the artwork of it because it's a cardinal. Uh, then four heal to wrap it up. That's pretty much it. Like this deck is really good. I see why like a lot of people say it's like one of the best decks. I don't I, like in terms of play. I think it's the most like consistent deck because you don't need to use hand like that. So you could keep a good hand and still have a like a decent board. Um, this is good against prison because they as long as you keep calling them but shadow tokens, they don't get anything like talking about it. And like, like I said, you just don't have to waste hand like that. Sometimes you do, but not really. Most of the time, your shadow tokens is putting in the work. You have orders that can remove, get like board removal. So you don't really, like, you just don't have to waste hand like that. And I think that's why a lot of people like this deck. That's why I like this deck mostly. I liked it before it even came out. But with the new support that it has, the fact that you don't have to... You don't really have to do much. You just keep calling shadow tokens. Maybe call a few cards here and there and just keep swinging at your opponent until they can't deal with it anymore. Because they have to they have to continuously guard um, a lot of like because like if you call three order like if you call three shadow tokens and then uh, you either call more units or you just call the shadow tokens, uh, you that's already a thirty column, which is that and then if you like play the grade one that can boost a shout out token by 15 plus her eight like they're you're swinging at some good numbers so it's like they either have to like be able to constantly guard that or don't and i think one of the best decks is bastion if i'm not mistaken and bastion they only already play as a bunch of three so this this could get really detrimental just keep swinging and swinging and swinging especially when you persona ride persona ride your that's an extra 10 you hit crits or fronts it, it does a lot and shoot, God forbid, if you hit the uh, order card when you're swinging. It's just, it's just, so that happened to, uh, I was playing a friend uh, from the channel, and I literally needed an over trigger to pass, and I literally hit it, and he walked out the room. So, uh, But 
this is Cardinal Death. This is great. It's fun. It, I'm, it's going to be the best deck for right now until set three drops and then the Alien Queens or Flag Boys or Pumpkin, Pimp Pumpkin comes out. And then they start changing the game up. All of those stuff was revealed. I really like uh, flagships. I'm kind of just talking now, but flagships are cool. Uh, I really want the hentai queens, but pimp, pump, pimp pumpkin has been like very controversial lately. And I'd like I understand. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. A lot of people have been talking about him for like premium. I don't play premium. I want to, but I'm just thinking of like overdress format in itself because I'm gonna be the one to pick up pimp pumpkin and maybe hentai queens. It just depends on like how my friends is feeling about it. But um, I'm not going to keep rambling. That was the deck profile for Orphis. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what y'all want to see in the comments. And uh, just keep looking us out. Like, but like, share it around. Share our channel around. Let us know what y'all like, what y'all dislike. And that's going to be the end of my turn. Peace.